Hello, hello. Yes. Cub, first, congrats on the, the victory. It looked like you're limping. How's the, uh, how's the leg feeling? It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked me um, twice in the same spot really good. And, and I know everyone's trying to, just because I had knee surgery a couple years ago, everyone's like, oh, that's, that's his weakness, kick his leg. Um, but luckily, I was out kickboxing in Denver for, for a month at this camp, and I was ready for it. But it caught me right in the calf a couple times, so my foot's not working so well. Is that kind of fun to kind of know that, uh, you know, opponents are targeting those certain things that, you know, to kind of keep it interesting, that you, you know what they're looking for, that you can kind of see when your opponents are keen on certain things? Is it just one of those things as, as experience, you know, injuries come on, and now you're seeing fighters kind of target these things? I mean, I don't hold it against them, but at the same time, I'm just like in my head, like when I fought Pineda and he just just started attacking my leg, I was just like, what a dick, you know? <laughs> and so when I hit him and dropped him, I was like, yeah, there you go. So, but then I felt bad and I was like messaging him like, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and you kind of alluded it to in the cage, you know, I, you, you, they start announcing the scores, you start to clap your hands almost like you thought that your opponent was going to get the nod, but then your name gets called. Was there an initial moment of shock? And I'm sure you're happy to get the win, but again, when you got to that point, did you think that the call was going to go to the other direction? I did. Um, I'm always hard on myself. Sure. I didn't think I won the first round. Um, everyone in my corner said I did. did I, that one was an easy one to call, and then I thought that he picked up some steam in the second, but I know I heard him at the end of the second. So in my mind, I was down two rounds, and I was like, I need to push the pace. Um, and I, it, he was powerful, and, and uh, it was taking a toll on me, but I knew my conditioning was good, and so I was just trying to stay in his face. But So I, I was mostly mad at myself for not being a little bit more active, yeah. um, but it was a... It was a chess match in there, so I was, it, it was a difficult one. But, you know, I got to watch it again. It sounds like everybody thought I won at least two rounds, so it's cool. Well, I, mean, I guess speaking to the chess match, it looked like you were employing a lot of feints and stuff in there before you actually got it. You were trying to play it a little slow. Was that part of the game plan to just try to take it slow and try to pick your shots? Because he was a, a strong striker as well. But it looked like when you finally just let it go and just kind of started throwing that you were having a lot of success. But was the game plan to try to take it a little bit slow and employ some feints and try to yeah, work it out? Yeah, because um, I'm at my best when I'm out there having fun and when guys kind of sit there and they, and they think they're going to counter strike with me, uh, it kind of plays into my favor because I'm a little bit craftier and faster than they give me credit for sometimes. Um, I think my whole career I've been a little underestimated as far as like my, my technique because I, people would say I'm more of a brawler, I think. Um, but, but I'm crafty. And uh, so if I, if I can get my fakes going and then show some speed, they'll kind of sit there and watch and try to counter me, and it just it usually works out in my favor. And you kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier, but um, was there anything that surprised you about Hakeem out there? Yeah, I thought he did a really good job of um, keeping his leg out there. I thought it was going to be easy to take uh, when I watched film on him, but he kept pulling it and then countering me with kicks, and I was like, damn. Uh, I really thought I was going to be getting those easy. Um, and, and so... That really impressed me, and then, you know, he showed up. He he was a dog tonight. He wanted to get it, and, uh, um, you know, I wanted to trade with him, but I needed to make sure that I was getting a little bit better of him out of every exchange. Did you guys exchange any words after the fight? Yeah. Um, I, told him, I told him I'd buy him a beer after. Uh, <laughs> And uh, no, no, I said I was gonna give him a big hug, and he said he, he'd buy me a beer. That's what that's what happened. But you know, there's it's always he was mean mugging me, and and you know that's kind of how I've been my whole career, yeah. give a little intimidation, and you know it's there's two alphas out there, you know. So, but at the end of the day, when when no one when no one falls, you gotta respect that person, you yeah. know. You you're like, all right, you're cool. And then last thing for me, at the very end, after your arms are raised and you're called, the, the, the camera goes to a shot of your family. How special was it to have all the little ones there watching you and cheering you on as well? It's, it's even... Uh... Sorry, there's some fans out there. Yeah, that's, you deserved it. Um, my, my kids being here is a little bit extra pressure. Yeah. But... 
two and zero now when they're here. <laughs> so I know it's always going to be a question, but like I said, um, I wanted them in the building because I wanted to see them right away. Yeah. But for them to be cage sides a little scary. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I feel like feel like it's important for them to see it's real life. You win, you lose. Because at this age, now they're able to fully understand what you do, you know, the wins and the losses and the, and the damage you take and why daddy looks the way he does when he comes home, right? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of painting the full picture. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just want them to be proud of me and, and um, you know, just know that, that that that's what I love about this sport is I'm trying to teach them is it like it could teach you so many lessons you know unfortunately there's a lot of fighters that I don't think ever learn those lessons but there's tons of lessons to be learned and um, I'm very appreciative of that. Thanks Cub it was a lot of heart man it was a great performance. Hey, Cub uh, t t to your right over here just wanted to ask you a question about Vicente Luque if I can as a veteran fighter you may have a perspective on this he had a bleed on his brain after his last fight with oh. Jeff Neal and he was out for the full year and there was a talk that he couldn't fight you know I know it takes a lot of courage to get in there do what you guys do but in that situation can you imagine as a father like he is and, and uh, as a husband that he had to go out there and fight that way with knowing that hey you know the commission's going to stop the fight at the first sign of trouble and just the courage and kind of commitment it would take for a guy to fight under those circumstances I mean yeah it's it's terrifying you know there's especially as you get older and you have kids there's you you're like there's more to life <laughs> you know um I had a similar situation. I had a, the whole left side of my face broken. If you watch every time I fight, I always ask, can you put more Vaseline on this side? I have plates all around my, my face. And um, to go back in there four months after that, you're like, you're like, I could do it, I could do it. That, that's like the craziness <laughs> about us, like I could do it. But then when you're backstage, you're like, you better do this, you know. You, you, it start the reality creeps in, and you're like, man, all right. You, you better be sure. So I, I'm sure that backstage he was sweating it a little bit, but you know that's what makes us warrior. I mean, and that's that's what we all got to be proud of about ourselves is that when when it comes time to it, we we step up, we make the walk, we you know we put it all on the line every time. Just one quick follow-up to that. Does it change once you get hit the first time? Like when you had your surgery and you went back in the ring, you get hit the first time. Does it go out of your mind? Does it change? Then you know, okay, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once once you get going, for me, it's backstage. Once I flip that switch, I feel in, uh, indestructible. You know, and that for me, that's a very hard process. You know, it's like. I, I tell people to try to explain to people I didn't even like fathom that when I was younger but like it's like like okay tomorrow at 6 p.m. you have a car accident we're gonna run you into a wall and you're like I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be okay but I might break my arm I might get a concussion you know and you're like but but you're good that's tomorrow you have to live with that and you have to like have that anxiety part of the day you're like what and then the other part of your day, you're like, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Like, that's what we live with, you know, and it's, it's a heavy weight to carry. Nick up. <clears throat> um, second prospect in a row you, for your next fight. Want another prospect? You want a, you want a legend? I asked you on Wednesday, but now that now that's after the fight, like, what do you want? I have no idea. I, I'm, I'm close to the end, you know. I'm I'm just having fun at this point. That's what that was my goal to have some fun tonight. And um you know, I've been fortunate to make some good money too and make some investments and um I'm just trying to make sure that I'm my family's taken care of and you know, I said it earlier I got my kids soccer coming up. I just said I'd be an assistant coach. So I got a I got obligations now. With with your career coming clo close to an end like how do you envision, like, do you want to fight on UFC 300? Do you want to fight in California for your last fight? Like, like, what's a perfect swan song for Cub Swanson? Well, that's the thing, like, I don't need all the attention. You know, I don't, I never really, like, I appreciate it, but that's never what I was looking for. 
So to have like a big thing, it's not really my number one priority. You know, um, I feel like just the fights and the training and the getting through it. That was all I needed, you know? So, I mean. But if I was gonna, if there was anything to answer your question, a fight in Palm Springs, that would be the only thing. A fight in Palm Springs, we have a brand new arena and um, you know, to be able to bring this sport to my hometown would be pretty big. Congrats. Thank you. I don't know, early, I'm back here. <laughs> Earlier this week, you said you wanted that Faber fight, but you don't know how realistic that was. Would you maybe entertain like a grappling match with them or something like that? Oh, for sure. <laughs> That'd be fun. Um, we both can grapple. I, I don't always show my grappling, but I can grapple. <laughs> awesome. And uh, I saw you just mentioned uh, your son's soccer is coming up and that you got the gig of assistant coach. I mean, you have a background in soccer or what's that about? <laughs> Yeah, I played my whole life, and then I played in junior college. I was on the, the beginning, like the statewide Olympic development program when I was young, and then I got injured, and then I went to juvenile hall and kind of blew all that. And then when I got out, I went to a junior college and played when I was 17. And then it kind of fizzled out, and that's when I found MMA, and I trained jiu-jitsu for one year and then I turned pro fighting and I've been doing that since. That's awesome. So you had like original ambitions of becoming like a pro soccer player? Yeah, that was my original goal. And then um, I kind of figured that wasn't going to happen and I tried to go to the military and they told me they didn't want me because I was a troublemaker and then MMA kind of worked out for me. Yeah, safe to say it turned out pretty well. Congratulations. Thank you. Cub, congratulations. Thanks. A book and a documentary is what I foresee for you. Is that a possibility? Yeah, that, that's something. I mean, honestly, I've thought about it. It'd have to be like a, like a series, honestly, because um, <laughs> with like my, my childhood and then growing up and then me getting into trouble for a few years, man, I got some stories. And it, I don't think it would be uh, in just a two-hour movie. I, I like. I've uh, I've cheated death of multiple times, and and uh, I changed my life. It's crazy where I am now to where I was. So. I hope it happens for you. And like I said, I definitely see it. And two of my favorite restaurants in Palm Springs, Lulu and Trio. Okay. Have you oh. ever eaten at either one of them? Yes, at both of them. Okay. Those are a little bit newer. Uh, I go, you know, I born and raised there. So, yeah, but those are good spots. I like Lulu's. Well, if you ever have a fight out there afterwards, got to celebrate at Lulu or Trio. Okay. Big shout out to them. Uh, Cub right here. Yeah. Going off the back to the movie and TV question, you've been in the game for a minute, almost 20 years, and you're about to retire. What is the message you want to send to your kids on like what it means to be great and what it means to just be somebody? That it's a heavy burden, you know? Um, it's crazy because when I was getting into trouble, I was like 15, 16. And then I got out of juvenile hall and I stayed straight and narrow, but I was barely making it. Then I found MMA, and and then when you when you're 15 years old, you're trying to get respect in the street, you know, like like I'm a bad dude, and and you're searching for respect, and then but it's so like closed-minded to where you're only thinking local, and then when I started fighting, it was like every every different neighborhood in my hometown was like, yo, you know, respect, and. The, and then I, uh, I was getting respect from everybody, and I was like, wow, that's cool. They're, they're respecting that. And then once I kept winning, I started seeing that, like, kids were looking up to me. And then I was like, man, oh, am I like a role model now? I'm like 22. <laughs> uh, and I remember athletes saying, like, I'm not a role model. Like, 
just because I'm good at sports, it's not my responsibility. But I was like, man, that's a, it's a responsibility regardless. Um, and I just, I felt a heavy burden right away. And I was like, man, no matter what, because I'm a professional mixed martial artist and the sport's getting bigger, I have this responsibility. I'm either going to be a good role model or a bad one. And I could pretend like it's not there, but it is. So I just try to be a, a, a good role model and, and try to just live the right way and do the right things and be a positive influence because where I came from, there wasn't a whole lot of them. Thank you, and congrats on your win. Thank you. All good? Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.